Hi, Jamie with you again. I hope you're very well indeed. Thank you for joining me on Talking Sonics. Now I wanted to talk about a really cool subject and that is making money or how to make money in your home recording studio. The top 10 ways to do this. Things that you may not have considered. Yes, this is a kind of a critical thing in this post coronavirus or still very much a coronavirus um, economy. We have a massive slump. It's really difficult to make money out there. If you have a home studio like I do, you'll be looking for ways to make some money. Hopefully uh, to add on to any other day gigs you might have. Hopefully you can have a night gig. Well, here we go with the top 10 ways to make money in your home studio. Number one is making demos for bands or solo artists. Now, if you've never recorded a band before or you have limited skills, you've bought some equipment, uh, some microphones, and you really want to get into it, get, get meaty, have a go at uh, marking up some drums or guitars or just working with a solo instrumentalist or singer, this is a cool thing to do, work on demos. So. You don't need to have great skills. You can offer this as a free service. Now, I know I mentioned that this is about making money. However, if you develop a relationship with a client or an artist, you can give them an offer of a free demonstration, maybe a session. Uh, if they like the results and you work hard at what you do and achieve something really great for them, well, you know, you can charge them a little bit of money on the next particular song you work on. So think of that and as your skills increase, you can incrementally increase the price. So this is really a good way to go. If you're an experienced uh, producer or engineer with a great studio with a lot of equipment and you know what you're doing, well, you know, demos are a great way to go. But demos are not uh, always everything. I mean, these days we're talking about more solo artists or electronic musicians and not necessarily as many bands out there. There's a negative here, but also a positive. There's a lot more individual uh, soloists wanting to become a star. You've got one ego to deal with, think about that. So there's money making opportunities in producing demos. Which brings me to number two, and that is artist development. Particularly in the case, uh, as I've mentioned, with the solo artists, there might be a mum and dad investor that really loves their teenage son or daughter singer or rock guitarist or whatever it might be, someone that might be an aspiring soul singer, uh, a pretty cool uh, young guy or girl with a hot voice. Well, they're the sort of people that are worth working with um, for artist development. Now, whether or not you're working with MIDI instrumentation or if you're a great musician yourself playing keyboard guitars, maybe you can program some electronic drums or other backing, creating something that will really finish a song for one of these solo artists, whether they are writing their own songs or doing a cover song, that is certainly a way of making money. So think about artist development and yeah, enjoy that process. It can be really creative and really great. Again, your skills probably would need to be a little higher if you're working on artist development. But hey, again, like the demo situation, if you have limited skills, perhaps try something for free for somebody. Start there and grow your skills and charge once you know uh, you're doing a great job. So number three of how to make money in your home recording studio is probably a bit of an ugly one. However, it's a lucrative one, particularly if you uh, communicate your message to a lot of people, and that is analog to digital tape transfers, whether that be a reel-to-reel -reel tape or a cassette deck tape, or another way of backing up analog sources. It might be a vinyl record, um, which may include some sort of audio restoration with plugins to remove crackle or hiss or hum. Uh, also, backing up other projects. Some people uh, have projects of multi-track uh, sessions that they might want to save or transfer from analog devices to digital. So think about this side of things. Think about analog transfers and communicate with 
with people. Be uh, creative. I mean, think about the people you might know that have a great vinyl uh, collection or some cassettes that they have some precious memories of something special that they want transferred for playing uh, on their digital device. So that can be really rewarding. Now, a part of this is also audio restoration, and you can kind of add that to the mix. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later because that uh, can be a bit more of an enhanced job or workflow, but analog to digital tape transfers and backing up of people's projects if need be, that's another way of making money in a home recording studio. Perhaps not the most enjoyable, but I'm gonna to talk to you about what I've been doing recently that is enjoyable in this regard and why a little bit later at the end of this video. So on to number four. And number four is mixing music. And really this is a case of you having a fantastic skill. Uh, you need to show demos of what you're capable of doing or what you've done in the past and have a really invested interest in making a mix great. And when I say make a mix great, you need to be a person that commits to making mixes great and really understanding things um, about, you know, mix bus summing and compression ratios, um, you know, getting the blend of tonal instruments right in a mix that's really quite a honed and full on skill. So you might have, uh, for example, some device that other musicians don't have, and that could be, you know, a Neve uh, summing mixer or a summing mixer like uh, this Chiltern behind me uh, that really gives a tonal um, gelling, um, a gushy sort of sound that will fatten, thicken and fit everything together in a mix. Um, analog tape can also do that sort of effect as you might have seen in one of my earlier videos uh, transferring to this two track reel to reel behind me. So there are lots of tips and tricks that uh, we can discuss in the future about mixing but you need to have great skills in order to sell those services. So if you have those skills and you've invested your time and your years into great mixing, uh, by all means offer that as a service. So number five on how to make money in your home studio is a bit of an upselling service or product and this is vocal comping or session compiling or editing. So editing of digital audio tracks or multi-tracks tidying things up, that could be also um, editing drum grooves, um, doing vocal comping, helping uh, a singer compile the best of their recorded tracks. Um, and yeah, just generally cleaning up sessions ready for mixing. Now there is a large case um, I know in the industry where bands you know, have their own equipment, they might have their digital audio workstation, some sound cards, some mics, they go home or go to the shack and record their song or their EP or their album they take it to someone else to mix and that poor mix engineer is dealt with a mess. And I mean a mess of tracks that are disorganized. The, the decisions haven't been made whether, you know, guitar uh, lead break number one is the one they're going with or which out of 10 vocal takes is the actual final chosen lead vocal. So, you know, upselling and discussing very carefully, explaining and discussing all about um, session editing and what's possible is an upskilled uh, product that you can sell in a home recording studio. But look, not one that's easy to sell, I will admit. But you know, talking to your clients, whoever they may be, or friends, put the time in and uh, they may appreciate paying for your time. Number six is voiceover recording. Now, if you're a music lover like I am, you might find that's all a bit of a drag, but sometimes it can be an opportunity where you can make the quick, fast buck with really no pain at all. What do you do? Throw up a Sennheiser microphone, give it a bit of compression, maybe a DS a plug in, and there you have it. You might edit that a little bit, remove some breath or some noise, compile that together and you've got the session done and dusted. So voiceover recording obviously requires good voiceover talent. You might want to seek some people or try some people out to help you in that regard, but it's also about selling that service. 
communicating with your local radio station or TV network or whoever might need a voiceover for their own YouTube video. I mean, there are lots of creative ways of thinking about how to sell a voiceover product. So certainly is possible. Now, I had a session in here a couple of months ago with the NBN Co, which is basically Australia's broadband or national broadband network. Now they wanted to have some kind of testimonial um, stories and these are not from their customers, but rather these voiceovers or these stories were from the staff that work in different regions of Australia. So a couple of them came into my uh, studio from a couple of different nearby um, local town regions. Bendigo, I think, was one. Benalla is another one. Uh, one of the guys lives not far from me, actually. And they told their story, ultimately reading a script, which was kind of worked out by a, an advertising agency, um, but also partly incorporating their own message. So this was a session that literally took about two hours and it earned some great income for the day. So voiceovers, testimonials, advertising, YouTube voiceovers, sky's the limit. Think about them, it's an easy way to make some money. So voiceovers is a cool little money earner and don't we all need to make some money from time to time? Think about that one. Number seven is jingle production or jingle song writing. Now, this doesn't have to be jingles with singing songs. In fact, probably better not to have singing jingles. Um, they're more tailored towards strict advertising messages, but jingle music, music that has different atmosphere, different feel, music that can be, again, backing for a YouTube uh, track or a TV commercial, just commercial use. A lot of uh, websites now have music backing as well. So there are multitudes of uses for high quality uh, jingle or backing music sources. Um, if you have a look at the Invato.com uh, site, the Invato marketplace, um, where you can buy all sorts of um, video production files and audio files and all sorts of things for production, you can see that there are many, many um, providers uh, that create things and create great products. And I'm sure there are thousands of downloads a day from these sites and there are a myriad of these sites out there. So jingle production, if you're a skilled piano player or a guitarist or a ukulele player, there seems to be <laughs> a lot of ukulele music and kind of different quirky sounds created by people. Um, something that might be upbeat or um, moody, kind of dark moody or atmospheric, the sky's the limit. If you have that theatrical approach in songwriting and uh, arrangement, by all means, jingle production is a money spinner. It's a long-term build. Yes, you're going to have to work extremely hard at producing the tracks, uploading them and waiting for people to buy. But, you know, if you do one a week or two songs a week, and you upload these, I'm sure, across the year. As a working professional musician, you will be making money in your home studio. So number eight is songwriting, and this is songwriting for musicians that really want to have a hit song. And this, therefore, relates to people that have been in the music industry, have a connection, have a great skill, maybe a background in writing a hit song, or maybe a chart song, or have had a record deal, or one or two, or just have a great network out there of musicians or band managers or record company people. Um, you can put your songs out to the world. Maybe you can find a publisher to assist you in selling those songs or finding a way that those songs can be used. So professional songwriting is a great thing to do. You need to have great skills. And decent demos. I'm sure decent demos are really required. You may not be a great singer, so you might need to pull in a great singer to sing on your demos as well. So yeah, that's a really skilled niche market product for really, really top professionals. Would I do such a thing? Well, probably not. <laughs> in fact, I will be talking to one of the world's best songwriters soon. So stick on this channel and, uh, and you'll find out a little bit more about what it takes to be the world's top songwriter. So carrying on with making money in your home studio, the next option might be audio restoration. Now, I've been doing some cassette and reel-to-reel analog to digital transfers 
of some wonderful products, or should I say some wonderful songs that were produced in the 90s by a great friend of mine, David Joseph. Now, David is a highly skilled orchestral um, concerto writer and pianist, um, but he had spent six months in the 90s per track, you know, kind of like literally writing piano concertos or concertos for violins and strings or percussion, some fantastic um, sessions he's produced. And these then were finished pieces that were recorded by symphony orchestras all over the world. So after, I think, perhaps around a decade of writing some incredible and significant works that were performed by incredible orchestras, David has gathered a collection of um, cassettes and reel-to-reels and CDs and these all need audio restoration, particularly um, the analog device tracks. So I've been taking these into my workstation and using some of the waves denoising um, tools, but also looking for other um, noise segments or reducing hiss in between um, different phrases or passages of music, um, compiling the tracks um, and, you know, cleaning up the, the, the top and tail of things, top and tailing. So audio restoration can be a really great thing. Now, these tracks, of course, um, they were analogue, so there was a degradation, um, really finding ways to master, um, bring out some smoother top end or adding a rounder bottom end or rolling off top end in some cases to smooth out the tracks, even adding convolution reverb to bring about a sort of a, a brighter or a more natural ambient to the track if it was a bit flat or a bit dull. That was another trick that I've been using. So audio restoration can be really, really rewarding. Now, it may be just denoising or declicking, or I mentioned um, with the record transfers and using some of the Waves plugins to decrackle or denoise or dehum. It's a real art form getting that right and learning how to do it well. Of course, the Ozone products are another option for denoising, declicking, dehumming. Audio restoration is fascinating. And look, you know, again, you might have numerous sources of, of where or why you'd be um, you know, seeking to um, help people with audio restoration. Think about that. There might be a local historic society that you can talk to and ask about whether they have any film or VHS or any videos or tapes from the past or recordings from the past that need some sort of audio restoration. There can be great money in a job like that and it can be highly rewarding when you achieve a fantastic sound and blow people's mind with a beautiful digital result that uh, will be here to stay. So number 10 of how to make money in your home studio, I have thought in this case of music mastering. Now, this is a highly competitive field. You need to have incredible equipment. If you're gonna do it well and do it right, you need to know a lot about the technology. You need to have your act together for music mastering. But of course, it is a way of making money. It's a fantastic trade to get into. Um, I would advise learning from others that are really skilled in the area before attempting it yourself. Um, professionally, um, of course, it is a fantastic field to get into. And you can also look at niche areas for music mastering. And from my experience working with the, uh, the classical tracks with David Joseph here in Australia, I'm actually thinking, wow, I might just get into niche um, mastering of um, classical pieces. So. There you go, not kind of my own songwriting skill or style, I mean, I'm a rock musician really, but I've really enjoyed doing the audio restoration and, and kind of really mastering these classical tracks. So think about niche opportunities with mastering. So have I missed anything else? Well, maybe, I've done 10, there's always more, but the key is, be entrepreneurial. I mean, I did think that music education or creating a course about recording music is another opportunity. Being entrepreneurial is the key to this. And, you know, really thinking about what your skills are, writing down your skills. What are your sellable skills? Think about your sellable skills. Make a list and then also make a list of people you might know that want those services and those that have money, money to spend. 
don't <laughs> try and communicate your job to someone that you know has no money in the bank. You really want to find a stable client. So in the case of my recent client, David, he's got a day gig, he's a lawyer, he can afford to pay me. I mean, maybe I should up my price, I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I don't wanna rip him off. No, look, I'm enjoying that product. So if you can think of anything else, like music education or running a course, please comment down below, share each other's ideas, be entrepreneurial, that's the key to the whole thing. Be an entrepreneur, that's how you're gonna make money in your home studio. You're not gonna do it overnight, but be creative. So thank you for joining me on Talking Sonics. I really appreciate you being here. If you haven't subscribed, tap the bell down below. You know what to do. And I will see you again very soon. Bye for now.